Okay, this example problem is for performance-based stock options. So if we read the problem here, it says Gaga Corporation initiated a performance-based stock option plan for its management on January 1, 2010. The plan provided for the granting of a variable number of stock options to management personnel who worked for the entire four-year period ending December 31, 2013 depending on the net income earned by the company in 2013. No options were granted for the first $50,000 of net income. Thereafter, the following options were available based on the level of net income in 2013. So, if right here, if they hit you know, these levels of net income, then this is the amount of stock options that were granted. Okay, so as we go down, <clears throat> the exercise price for the $5 par common stock was $20 per share. The fair value of the options on the grant date was $9. Assume the market price for the Gaga stock and Gaga's for forecasted 2013 net income were as follows at each of the following dates. Um, so this is again just the... Okay, now th for this problem... Um, will probably get be given this number but this is irrelevant the stock price um, it doesn't matter this is the forecasted income so this stuff does matter and these are the dates so the, the actual problem is to prepare the journal entries related to these stock options of Gaga for the period 2010 to 2013 assuming that all available options are exercised on December 31st 2013 so our first journal entry is this right here you debit compensation expense for forty thousand five hundred dollars and you credit paid in capital from stock options for forty thousand five hundred dollars and the reason you do that is right here so the probable income at the end of 2013 um, as of December 31st 2010 is 140,000 so you get that from our table right here okay so come back down 140,000 at 140,000 dollars of net income there would be 18,000 options granted the fair value of those options is nine dollars per option um, you multiply these two together to get hundred and sixty two thousand dollars and then you divide that by four the service period is four years and that would give you a two thousand and ten compensation expense of forty thousand five hundred dollars and that is your journal entry right here okay now, for the next year, at the end of the next year, December 31st, 2011, you would debit compensation expense again for 94500 and credit paid in capital from stock options um, of the same amount. So if we go to our table again, we want the probable 2013 income as of December 31st, 2011. So that's this right here. So it's forecasted that we will have, or that Gaga Corporation will have $170,000 of net income. And that would put us at the um, $30,000, or 30,000 stock options. So if we come down to our explanation right here, $170,000, 30,000 stock options, times $9 per option, $270,000. If you divide that by 4, um, that is a hundred, well, it's $135,000. But you've got to minus what you already um, expensed in 2010, which is 40500 and so that would leave your 2011 compensation expense 94500 which is what our journal entries are. 
Now one explanation right here is this revised compensation, um, this right here, this is the revised compensation expense for 2010 and 2011. So this is 270,000 times, well, two-fourths or one-half. I mean, it's accounting for the two years of the four years. Um, and the $270,000 is replacing the $162,000 from 2010's estimate because now the estimated income is higher. So that 162 becomes irrelevant except for the 40,500 that we actually did expense. So you have to minus that from the 135 and that gives you the 2011 compensation expense of $94,500. Okay, now this one, at the end of 2012, this is a little bit different. Um, you will notice that these have been reversed. We are now debiting paid in capital from stock options and crediting compensation expense instead of vice versa like we did the first two entries. And the reason for that is right here. So, if we, um, the probable 2013 income as of December 31st, 2012 was 135. That would take our options back down to 18,000. Each one's $9, it's 162,000. Um, four years in the service period. The revised compensation expense. Now, if we look at this, it's 162,000 times three-fourths because this is our new estimated number um, and we need it's our third year so we multiply it by the three out of the four years that gives us 121,500 but the compensation expense from 2010 and 2011 added together is 135 which is more than our estimated expense um, this year so that gives us a negative 2012 compensation expense of 13,500. So you just reverse the journal entries that we had before. Okay, now at the end of 2013, um, we have compensation expense. It's back to uh, a debit, 40,500. We credit paid in capital from stock options for the same amount, and now we have our actual 2013 income. It's 145,000. So that leaves us in the tier where we have 18,000 stock options times nine dollars per option. It's 162,000. If you take away, okay, so this is the 40,500 from 2010 plus 94,500 from 2011 minus the 13,500 from 2012 that was a negative estimate. Um, and that gives us the 121,500. So you've got your total compensation expense minus the 121,500. That leaves us with the 2013 compensation expense of 40,500. And when they uh, exercise the option on December 31st, 2013, this is cash paid for the option, $20 per share times 18,000 shares, $360,000. This is the total value of the options that were exercised, $9 per option times 18,000 shares, that's $162,000. Then you've got a credit common stock at the $5 par, that's just $5 times 18,000 shares, $90,000. And you credit paid in capital in excess of par uh, for the balance, which is $432,000.